Hello, it's Mrs. McCullough again, and we're doing the last lesson in our series about how readers track characters. So far, we've learned that you can note all the details, like what the characters do, say, or think, for just one facet, being the characters, across the whole entire text. And when we note those details, then we start to think about them, and we have our, our thoughts with our thinking voice. And so we we have memories and we look for patterns and relationships and things that go together. And we use that to figure out the character's personality or otherwise known as the character's trait. And that'll stay the same all the way across the text. We also know that we can do that type of thinking to figure out how characters change. We look at how they are from the beginning of the text on into the end of the text. And when we think about what did this character learn? That will also help us determine what's the central message, what's the lesson, what's the theme. And that's what we worked on last time. The theme is actually the me, right? You see that there? It's the message the author teaches me. And so we can look at the lessons learned by the characters, but what it does is it really helps us as people to figure out how we can be better in our own lives. And so when we were coming up with the different themes, then we weren't using the characters' names or their problems or the setting or anything, but we were coming up with one sentence to tell what the theme would be. And the theme was really based on what people should do or what someone else could do. And it was all focused on how the author believes that people should do something or they should think something or they should try something. And so we, we came up with a couple different themes. We were working on a bad case of stripes. We were also working on Frog and Toad are Friends. We were working on that chapter from there called A Lost Button. And then you were working on the theme statement that you might have for after the fall. Well, now I want to show you that readers can actually write about their ideas for the theme. And it's more than just one sentence. And so I want to show you the tools that you need so that you can do this. So remember that poster? Yeah, that's the poster where we learned that readers make inferences. We've been doing that all along, but that they also explain them in writing. And so we talked about how your inference is the first sentence, and then you have to have reading voice details from the text to back it up. Well, you need those same types of things when you're writing about theme, but I need to let you in on a little secret. You see, when you're doing something with theme, then you actually need more than two sentences. When you're working on theme, you need three sentences because you need something from what the character thought at the beginning of the text, you need something about what the character learned in the middle of the text or the big pivotal tipping moment. Remember that? And you need something that the character thought at the end of the text. Okay, so does that sound familiar? Where would you have been working on something like that? It is this page right here. Remember? So, that would be where you would start to get ideas for your first sentence. This is where you start to get ideas for your second sentence. And this is where you start to get ideas for your third sentence. So you guys, it's easy. You've already done a lot of the work. I wanna take you through this process. So on my chart, I want to add the third sentence, third sentence there as a detail sentence that's gonna be evidence to back up our thinking. Of course, we need a period because we always stop a sentence with a period. But as we are learning how to do this, I want to actually uh, teach you something else that you can use as a writer about your reading. Okay. So when we're working on that very first sentence, that inference sentence, when we're answering what we think the, the theme is, then we want to do this. We want to repeat a few words from the question. What? Let me show you what I mean, okay? Let me show you. Let's say you were working on this particular 
question, which it's not really a question. There are no question marks in it, but it's a prompt. Okay. And it's asking you to do something. What's it asking you to do? I'm going to read it in my best test lady voice. You ready? Identify one theme from a bad case of stripes. Support your answer with evidence from the text. Does that sound like the test lady? Yeah. Okay, so repeat words from the question. What words? Well, tell us what you're even answering, that you're going to tell us what the theme is. And tell us maybe what text it comes from, a bad case of stripes. Because you don't want to just jump right into your first sentence being... People should decide who they are and not worry about what others think. What? Where's that coming from? We don't even know. Okay, so we are going to use just a few words. Look at this piece. One theme, so it comes from the question, one theme from a bad case of stripes, so I'm telling you what the story is, is that people should decide who they are and not worry about what others think. Boom. Done. Isn't that easy? Yeah, you've already done the thinking. So that's the first sentence. Done. What? I know. Isn't that simple? Okay, so remember I told you that you need to consider this idea of the character change chart. That your first green detail is going to come from the beginning where we saw that Camilla believes it's best to give up what she loved and hopes that kids would like her. Okay, so we're going to go back into the text and pull out some details where she thought that. Okay, so let's do it. I've got my book. Okay, and on that very first page, what did it say? Ba bam, right here. It said Camilla loved lima beans, but she never ate them. And why was that? Because she wanted to fit in. So let's look at how we can turn that into our first green sentence, okay? It's all about what's at the beginning. When the story begins, see, that's at the beginning, Camilla thinks it's best to never eat lima beans so the other kids will like her. But then she changed into a bad case of stripes. Remember that? Okay, so that's all I'm doing. I'm first just telling the theme statement in that first sentence. The second sentence, I go into the beginning and I pull out some details that would support what Camilla believes, what she thought. I know, it's so easy when you look at it like this. Okay, so now, what would be in the second sentence? You need something from that middle portion right here. You see that? Camilla had changed so much that she couldn't recognize herself. Remember when she turned into the house and she knew she had to tell the truth. So where in the text did we learn about that? Where that happened? I've got it marked right here. Remember that? And so what happened here was that she needed to eat the lima beans to actually cure herself. Remember the woman she brought it in? And at first, Camilla was lying, but then she said, the truth is, I really love lima beans. And so she knew she had to tell the truth. So how could we write that in a second sentence that's about the tipping point, that's about what happened in the middle? However, in the middle, see, I'm telling where it comes from, it seemed like the only fix for Camilla was to eat lima beans. So she told the truth and ate what she loved. Ah, see? Yeah, that's what I mean about going in and pulling out some of those details to support our theme. Okay, where are we going to get the last one? Oh, I bet you know. You're right. It's what did the character think or believe at the end of the passage. And see here, it says Camilla believes it's best to eat the lima beans and not care about what other kids think. So where did we get that? We got it back here on the last page of the text. And so how could we write that? Well, let's look. We want to put at the end, because it's at the end of the text. 
Camilla didn't care a bit when the kids told her that she was weird, right? She's just happy. She's just being herself. She's eating her lima beans. And so, guys, it's that simple. You've already done the work. You've already done the thinking. You just need to look at your character change chart and you need to pull something in from the beginning of the text, the middle of the text, the end of the text. That's what you have to do, okay? After you state your theme statement. Okay, so let's try this. I want you to have a chance to try this. Let's switch books, okay? This one's from after the fall. You were working on that. You were coming up with a theme statement. I don't know what you chose, but I'm going to show you an example of one, okay? So state the central message from after the fall. Well, wait a minute. I thought we were talking about theme. Uh, uh, uh. Remember, theme has a couple different names. It could be called central message. It could also be called lesson. Or as we know, it could be called the theme. All those mean the same thing. What lesson could people learn from this story? Okay, so it says central message. So if we were going to figure out what the central message was, and we had it on our pink sticky note, or we wrote it on a um, piece of paper or something like that. So then what we're going to do to put that down on paper is we're going to repeat a few words from the question. And so what might we put? The central message, right? From after the fall, we want to tell what we're answering and maybe, you know, what text it comes from. And so let's see an example of one. A central message from after the fall is that people should try again, even if they fail. Ah, right. So is that a, is that a lesson that's for all of us to learn? Yeah. Does it say Humpty Dumpty's name? Nope. Good. It's not supposed to. Does it talk about the setting on the wall? Nope. Good. Does it's not supposed to. Does it say he, you know, was an egg, it turned into a bird? Nope. Good. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be more global when it's the theme, right? People should try again, even if they fail. Okay. So that's the first one. And maybe you had something like that when you did the homework last time. But now, We've got to support it with three detail sentences. And we need something from three different parts, okay? So where are we going to get our first sentence? From the, you say it, beginning, okay? And beginning of the text. What did the character think? What did the character believe? Ah, you can do this, guys. All you need is that character change chart. So what did Humpty Dumpty believe? Well, at the beginning, he believes he cannot even try because accidents happen, right? So let's go back in to that part where he tells us in the very beginning what he believes. All right, so let's, let's actually go in. I've got this on um, Epic, and let's see it so that you can look at the print better. And so what does he say? Well, he he really, he doesn't want to go high up on the wall, even though he loves being close to the birds because, you know, accidents happen. He kept saying that over and over again. It was just an accident. Accidents happen. So how could we put that together? In the beginning, Humpty Dumpty, what? Didn't want to go up on the wall. Okay, he, he didn't want to be close to the birds. He didn't want to go up on the wall even though he wanted to be close to the birds. Why? Because accidents happen, maybe something like that, okay? So let's go in here then and let's see what, maybe you had something similar to this. There's not one right answer, okay? At the beginning, Humpty Dumpty believes that he cannot even try to go back up on the wall, okay? Did you say something like that? To be close to the birds. Now, why are those green? Because those are details from the text. And that's why they're quoted even with those little quotes because those words come right out of the text. And he didn't want to go back up on the wall to be close to the birds because accidents happen. Again, green details because those come right out of the text. 
Okay, so now we need a second sentence. Where are we going to get the second sentence? Somewhere in the middle of the story. And so let's go back up here to our character change chart. And so what, what did we think? Humpty Dumpty lost his plane up on the wall. And he remembered how happy he was up there. And he knew he had to face his fears to be happy. So where do we need to go in the text to pull out some of the details? Oh, I know I can see the page in my mind too. Let's, let's go several pages over. And let's see, it's right where, right where, here, right? Right when the plain bird slash thing got up on the wall. And so what did he do? He knew he was going to climb that wall because he wanted to get his plane back. And so I think you're right. I think it's right around here in the middle. That's that change. He knew he had to climb it so that he could be happy. So what might we say then if we were going to use some of those details? What might we say in our second detail sentence? Okay, something that's from the middle of the text. In the middle, Humpty Dumpty realized he, what? had to climb the wall and face his fear or something like that, okay, to get his plane. Well, any of those would work. Remember, there's not one right answer. Let's see just an example of one. In the middle of the story, Humpty Dumpty knew he had to climb that wall. Green reading voice details because they come right from the text so he could get his plane back. There it is. Okay, so now we need a third sentence. And the third sentence is going to come from where? At the end of the book. And where can we go to find those particular details? Let's go back up to that change chart. Okay, at, at a character change chart up here. Humpty Dumpty believes that it is worth it to do what he wants, even if he is frightened. Okay, so can you can you remember where that was? Where did that take place? It was worth it to get up there to the top. Remember? Remember when he's standing up there? Oh, I know. And this page too. Oh, look at his arms up. He's no longer afraid. Okay, so let's go out to the text where you can see the words. So let me see here. Yeah. Okay. So he says, until I was no longer afraid. And then what? He starts cracking and he says, hopefully you remember me as the egg who got back up. Yeah. And then we know that he learned how to fly. Okay. So how could we say that then? If we're going to write this for the third sentence, we could say, by the end of the story, Humpty Dumpty learned that he maybe wasn't afraid anymore and he wanted to be known as what? The egg that didn't give up? Okay, something like that. I don't know. It doesn't have to be exactly what I say. There's not one right answer, but something about how he felt at the end of the story. So let's go down. By the end, Humpty Dumpty was no longer afraid and wants to be known as the egg who got back up. Okay, so that's the trick, guys. We're doing it. We are writing a sentence that is our inference. We're coming up with three different detail sentences that serve as evidence. Details from the text to support our inference, like any of the kind of mumbo jumbo teachery language. That's, that's what we're doing. It's as simple as that. You already did the thinking. You already did the thinking on the change chart. You just have to go up and remember, what did we say? Beginning, middle, and end. And then you go back and you look at those details closely to see which ones you want to pull out to put in your sentences. 
Okay, so I think you can do this. I think it's going to be super easy. And so here's what I've got for you, okay? I've got a question. What is the central message or theme from a lost button in Frog and Toad are Friends? Remember that chapter from Epic? So include evidence from the text to support your answer. Okay, we already came up with some theme statements. And I put one on here if you'd like to use that one. People are more important than possessions. And remember, we learned possessions are stuff, like buttons and coats and stuff like that, okay? And so now you already have that part. You just need to rewrite it. And you need to repeat some words from the question. Which words do you think would be the most important words to pull out? Because you're not going to put all of that in your question, in your statement. No, you are just going to pull out a few words and then you're going to list your theme statement. Okay, then you got to have three other sentences. Where are you going to get those sentences? From the beginning and the middle and the end. And I've given you that chart. I've given you, Toad thinks his big problem is that he lost his button. Then he gets angry and he screams at Frog. And then he realizes that he made a lot of trouble for his friend Frog. Then he goes back and he gives his friend a jacket because his friend is much more important than things. There you go. So all you need to do is think about what details do you want to pull out of the text? And it's on Epic, so you can go right back in here. What details do you want to pull out of the text to put that in your first sentence? What details do you want to pull out of the text when he's getting all mad and he realizes he's made a lot of trouble for Frog? Okay, what details do you want to pull out of the text when he gives his friend the coat? Okay, and that would be how you would write about your inference. You would explain your thinking in writing by repeating a few key words and listing the theme and then using details from the text from beginning and middle and end. That's what you would do if you were in Mrs. McCullough's class, but your teacher might have an even better idea.